the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Who is like you, Lord? in all the earth please keep the scripture there mm. nothing in this world jesus you're the cup that will run dry it says, who is like unto thee, O Lord, among the gods? So the Bible recognizes that there are gods. He does not call them men. He calls them gods. And then it says, who is like thee, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises? It does not stop there. It says, doing wonders. Just keep verse 11. Doing wonders. Our God is a supernatural God. Our God is a miracle working God. From Genesis to Revelations, we see the consistency of God as far as his supernatural operations is concerned. And the Bible tells us in Malachi chapter 3 and verse 6, the A part, it says, For I am the Lord, I change not. I am the Lord. My character is consistent. I can bend my methods. My approach can change. But intrinsically, I do not change. I am the Lord and I change not. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 8. Paul himself was teaching us. And the Bible says, Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 8. He says, did I get that right? Jesus Christ the same today, yesterday, today, and forever. It talks about the consistency that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday. He's the same today, and he's the same forever. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday. He's the same today, and he's the same. There are people who are not the same way you knew them both for good and for evil but the bible says jesus is the same yesterday write this down miracles and the supernatural are the foundation of the christian faith you have to understand and appreciate it that the miraculous and the supernatural are the foundations the pillars the foundation of the christian faith The era of miracles are not over. Indeed, they are the foundation of the Christian faith. The Bible is a compendium of the miraculous, the wondrous acts of God from Genesis to Revelations. Now, I know that one of the reasons why, let me just address this up front. One of the reasons why people fear the supernatural one of the reasons why people fear the miraculous is because of a very sincere desire in their hearts to not dapple into extra biblical practices please look up it is it is a fear that many people have because in our world today we have all kinds of religion and even sadly among the christian fold there are all kinds of practices that based on the authority of scripture qualify to be seen as 
extra biblical practices and practices that may not be consistent with the way God operates. So in a bid to manage that fear, many people have shut the door at anything that is supernatural in context. In a bid to walk within the zone of safety and the zone of balance. Let me therefore say this. God does not walk magic. God is not a magician. Magic is a practice that is not derived from the operation of the word of God and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. It does not matter what advantage it seeks to provide. Are we together now? Magic based on the authority of scripture is not how God works. Magic is largely demonic and is largely a practice that is vocally rooted in satanism. God is a miracle worker, not a magician. The difference between a miracle worker and a magician is that relationship is not involved in magic. But when God wants to work the supernatural and miracles, it comes as a derivative of a relationship. When you meet someone, for instance, some idol worshiper or some uh, practitioner of satanism, he does not care your name. He does not desire relationship with you. He just wants to know what your problem is and he tells you the conditions to satisfy and whatever reward you desire is given to you. But that is not the way God operates. When God comes to you, he does not just give you power. He's interested in a relationship. Are we together? God does not work magic. Now, can I tell you this? Um, in the kingdom, we do not judge the, the godliness of an operation by the advantage it produces. We judge the godliness of an operation by the force that is behind it not just the result it produces because many of us yet yeah, this is africa we're talking about there are many of us who through the means of superstition divination satanism and all kinds of idol practices have derived obvious benefits maybe some of us before we met jesus christ we came from families that were deeply rooted in idolatry and we have partaken of the fruits of those idols those idol practices for instance people have received safety supposedly people have received healings people have received all kinds of things from some of these practices so chances are that we view God and because we live in a, a sociological context that just sees God as anything that provides good anything that provides good we call it God anything that seems to carry a semblance of evil we call it Satan. There are many good things that are not of God. Are we together now? Yes. If you do not understand this, you have already opened the door for all kinds of deception. That means that if Moses throws his rod, just because it became a serpent, and Janus and Jambes threw his own rod, it also became a serpent. It does not mean they are colleagues. It does not mean they are brethren. The Bible clearly shows you that it is not the manifestation of the rod becoming a serpent. It's the influence that is back of it. Because you see, many times when we are under pressure, when we are under pressure, our focus becomes the result, not the influence. So I, I need money. I'm broke and I'm hoping that I can have some means of financial blessings. And someone tells you there is someone it's not exactly evil and it's not like he's um it doesn't really do anything obviously bad um highest any the sacrifice ranges from chicken to goat there's nothing human at all and chances are that that serves as a succor especially under that pressure are we together and we expose ourselves into all kinds of things our focus is largely on the result not just the spirit that motivates it i told you here and i've taught you that the holy spirit is not the only spirit that can grant you access to the spirit realm any spirit at all is already higher than this three-dimensional realm hallelujah 
there is a condition for anything any miracle any supernatural manifestation to give glory to god number one it must be a derivative of the word number two it must be under the influence of the spirit of god number three it must bless the saints and glorify jesus these are the conditions for any spiritual process any spiritual process to be accredited as though it, as that it came from god if it does not pass through this test number one if it's not derived from the word number two if the holy spirit does not have a role to play in that process and then number three if it does not bless the saints and reveal jesus something is wrong hallelujah yes this is the basis upon which we can reject many good things because they did not pass that test god does not work magic but he is a miracle worker write this down please god has always desired to display the supernatural on earth and among his people there is no confusion as to the fact that it has always been and still remains the desire of god to bring the manifestation of the supernatural in the midst of his people from genesis to revelation we see all kinds of supernatural interventions god stepping in revealing himself his power and his glory to his people from the old testament to the new testament we see all kinds of manifestations of the miraculous all kinds manifestations of power manifestations of grace and so on and so forth the bible has never hidden the fact that god himself desires that manifestation when you read genesis the very creation story is supernatural isn't it amazing and and also instructive that the first revelation the first the first um um person of the godhead that was revealed expressly in scripture was the holy spirit in the beginning the bible says genesis 1 god created the heavens and the earth it says now the earth verse 2 was dark void and formless and the spirit of god hovered round the face of the deep and then the supernatural begins let there be and the bible says there was and then he began to create recreate and do all kinds of supernatural things in the old testament we see all kinds of manifestations of the supernatural from moses abraham manna falling from heaven all kinds of supernatural judgments that happen to people instantly you read the bible and you see supernatural favor that happened to people these were all manifestations of the power of god beyond the realm of science beyond the realm of logic beyond the realm of reason then we come to the new testament and you see all kinds of supernatural manifestation time will fail me to begin to discuss them in detail from the incarnation jesus himself his incarnation was supernatural the virgin birth very supernatural is still a thing of contention today in fact is one of the basis for contention the contention of the christian faith the reality of what we have come to know theologically as the virgin birth number one the incarnation that god becomes a man the bible calls it a mystery and he said it's a great mystery great is the mystery of godliness god becomes a man then the virgin birth a young lady by believing the angel and cooperating with him is able to host the word and the word is born and named jesus how about his work on the earth from turning water to wine and all kinds of miracles that happen and then his resurrection from the dead his ascension the bible lets us know that when he was coming he came through the womb of a woman but when he was returning he levitated with honor into heaven and a cloud received him and the angels came and said why do you seek jesus he said this same jesus you see will return the same way he has gone you look at the life of the early church you see all kinds of supernatural manifestation 
Acts chapter 2, the Bible says, Now when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were gathered together in one accord suddenly. This was a miracle that was in the similitude of Ezekiel 37. Suddenly, there was such a manifestation, a sound from heaven, as of a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Verse 3, it says, And they appeared to them. It was not said it was created. It appeared. That's supernatural. The tongues that came on their head appeared. To appear means that it came from the invisible realm and found expression in the midst of the people. Tongues like as of fire and sat on each one of them. And the Bible says, verse 4, that they were filled with the Holy Ghost. They began to speak with tongues, you know, and all of that. And then when the people heard them speaking, it was a day of Pentecost. They came and they said, who are these crazy people who are drunk early in the morning? And Peter shot them and said, no, we are not drunk. This is only in the morning. He said, but this is that. This is that which was prophesied by prophet Joel. So the foundation of Christianity is the supernatural. To not believe in the supernatural, therefore, is to not believe in God because god is supernatural please look up isn't it a mystery ladies and gentlemen how that i am on earth and i surrender my life and my heart to god who i may not have seen physically and yet i believe that i'm all right i'm not sick i'm not mad i am okay and then not only that i stand and i speak to him every day can you imagine to the carnal man or the natural man what it means to be praying around and you're saying father i give you all the thanks i thank you because you hear me i bless you for this day in the name of jesus you are my lord and savior and someone says who are you talking to exactly and you say i'm talking to my father who art in heaven And he says who is that and he said be careful the next instruction is hallowed be your name don't disrespect this man i'm talking to you believe you are talking to the lord and then you have the audacity to believe that he talks back to you are we together now now many people doubt the supernatural but you do not have any problem with picking up a metallic object produced by different companies hanging it on your ears and talking with boldness and not ignoring who is looking at you you dial a number and out of 7.6 billion people on earth it does not make a mistake it goes with digital precision to any part in the world you instruct it to then the person is talking to you ladies and gentlemen even planes cannot fly that they cannot cover that distance and yet do you not know that as at the time that call happens is no longer in this realm oh yes i'm here talking with someone and the person is right there in another nation even with the fastest of planes it will take hours and hours in the air to get there and yet with one dial we're talking and laughing and now you even have the audacity to be looking at the person you are talking and looking at the person you have you, and you have never questioned what you are doing and yet when we say there is a god in heaven who talks who moves who can heal we say are you sure oh come on how are you sure the person you are speaking to is not a demon who is standing on your phone There are people who have not seen themselves physically for years, yet they don't miss themselves because there is a system, a bridge has been created. They communicate every day. And yet when it has to do with the supernatural, the moment there is a supernatural manifestation of the power of God, now we have a problem with it. How can someone be healed? who you probably did not touch, who had a condition diagnosed medically, and we know that it will take this person months to recover, and in a moment, 
you invoke a name the name of jesus and that person is healed that person is blessed how do you release words and tell someone in the name of jesus your week is blessed then the person returns and say i can't believe what has happened to me the supernatural write this down miracles are supernatural occurrences that defy the laws of nature miracles are supernatural occurrences that defy the laws of nature also defy the usual course of events upon the earth miracles are supernatural occurrences that defy the laws of nature and also defy the usual course of events upon the earth that means that these are manifestations supernatural manifestations that defy logic they defy the natural sequence the way things happen upon the earth the bible lets us know in acts chapter 2 and verse 22 acts chapter 2 and verse 22 it says ye men of israel peter is speaking hear these words jesus of nazareth look up please a man approved of god among you by miracles and wonders and signs which god did by him who did it god he used him god did by him in the midst of you as ye yourselves have known so he says jesus a man approved of god that means it's a system of accreditation validating that he really came from me miracles signs wonders can i tell you this the church that jesus died for is not a weak and a beggarly church the church that jesus died for is not a negotiating church that sits down and we continue to be victims of situations and circumstances both human and demonic the church that jesus died for and the church that he's returning for is a supernatural church in matthew chapter 10 when you read from verse 1 then we'll flip very quickly to verse 7 matthew chapter 10 this was jesus now having mentored the disciples for a season the bible says he called unto him his 12 disciples and he gave them power 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 against unclean spirits that means that power has no effect on clean spirits the moment you are a clean spirit you are welcome the power does not have any effect but the moment you are an unclean spirit that power was not designed to be silent power against unclean spirits not to talk to them not to discuss with them to cast them out and to heal all manner of sicknesses and all manner of disease verse 7 and he instructed them as ye go preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand next verse it says heal the sick with that power i gave you cleanse the lepers raise the dead cast out devils freely ye have received freely give do you know what he's saying in other words do not just carry an empty message when you carry an empty message the people have a right to doubt my friend look at me come hold on hold on what was wrong with you it's all right where are you coming from from meduguri that's all right check yourself check yourself that's all right listen that's all right <laughs> help him he's still under the anointing that's all right listen it's okay take the mic away from him please my friend look at me whether you are a believer or an unbeliever you are welcome to church this is the power of god in the name of jesus christ when i'm going to be making the altar call later on when you hear the altar call just run quickly and come and join the people here
in the name of Jesus. God bless you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Are we together? John chapter 20. John chapter 20. Please write it down. John chapter 20 from verse 21. John 20. John 20 from verse 21. And Jesus said unto them, Peace be unto you. Someone prophesy peace to yourself. One more time, say, peace be unto me. He said, as my father has sent me, question, how did the father send him? As my father has sent me with the supernatural life, supernatural message, supernatural demonstration of that reality, he says, even so, send I you. I am not just sending you. There is a way I sent you send you to where to business to ministry to politics it's not just to come and stand in front of a pulpit we've dealt with that already there is a way god sent us there is a way the world should know he's the one who sent us and that signature is the supernatural as the father jesus did not have to go around saying hey i've come everybody listen to me there were results that went before him manifestations of the power of god the sick getting healed everything happened and then when people say who is this he now said all of you come and he began to teach them as my father has sent me in john chapter 14 and verse 2 john chapter 14 verse 12 sorry john 14 please go to verse 12 he said verily verily i say unto you he that believes on me the works that i do shall he do also and greater works than this you know there have been all kinds of interpretations of this scripture depending on whether you believe jesus was serious or not many people have watered it down and given a very nice excuse because they know when you make such a bold statement like this both life and people would demand a defense of this greater works but jesus said it greater works than this shall ye do because i go to my father in mark chapter 16 mark chapter 16 we'll read from verse 17 mark chapter 16 from verse 17 mark 16 from verse 17 mark chapter 16 from verse 17 and these signs shall follow them that believe in my name they shall cast out devils when you use your name the demons will not go it says they shall speak with new tongues next verse they shall take up serpents and if they drink any deadly thing it shall not hurt them they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover ladies and gentlemen who said it jesus jesus himself he spoke these words and he said this will happen these are not parables he really said it and he meant it until we restore the supernatural to the church not just blind fanatism but the supernatural as a demonstration of the fact that god is alive and he's still moving in the midst of his people can i tell you this if the supernatural begins to erode out of the church a day will come will come to church and only meet empty pews i guarantee you today in our world there are options i hope you know that oh yes sir there are options do not downplay the desperation of people and how far people can go when they are desperate we have no right to keep telling people don't go to idol worshipers don't go to anyone don't worship any other god just come to jesus now they come and then we tell them don't worry he will do something i, I spoke to him yesterday he just said he's still walking Are we together yes. the church 
that Jesus died for is a supernatural church. The supernatural is not for preachers. The supernatural is not for apostles. The supernatural is not for prophets. The supernatural, please look at me. The supernatural is not for those in ministry. The supernatural is for believers. The moment you come into this faith life, you have come into a supernatural life in every way. You must expect the supernatural, not just supernatural events, supernatural living. Not just supernatural events, supernatural living, that this becomes your default state. That means you get up in the morning and it is possible that someone just comes to your office and shakes your hand and just because he touched your hand without knowing the person leaves and all of a sudden a, a, a disaster that should happen to him when those demons come they meet a system of defense who prayed for this one no a supernatural person touched this one listen to me listen the life that you received that you call zoe eternal life john chapter 3 verse 16 just help those under the anointing he says for god so loved the world believers look at me let's go back to elementary christianity god so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son that whosoever everybody say whosoever he didn't say that the man of god he didn't say the american he didn't say the european he didn't say the african that whosoever believes in him listen should not perish but as a reward you have to have means it's been given to you to have means you are not expecting shall have so way the life of god listen brothers and sisters hear me and i want you to truly believe what i'm saying the bible says this is the record that's a legal terminology many of you are, are legal practitioners here this is the record that god has given us eternal life i agree that from my background i may not have anything help them i agree that based on whatever it is but you have eternal life you know what eternal life is eternal life is not the life you will get when you get to heaven no 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 eternal life is the supernatural god by his spirit coming to plant within your human spirit the reality of heaven the reality of the life the power the glory the culture the atmosphere of heaven implanted in a human spirit this is not a preacher sermon this is what the bible says listen listen every one of you here who is in christ is already a partaker of this divine life hold on please listen listen the reality of divinity finding expression in humanity should not be doubted how did jesus enter the womb of mary that's the same way he entered your heart the way jesus entered the womb of mary is the same way don't you tell me how did it happen the answer the angel gave mary is still the answer i'm giving you how shall these things be the power of the highest just that i stand in front of an altar and i make a declaration i hand over my life to jesus and while they are laughing at me a transaction is happening in heaven the same way the holy ghost came and brought jesus the word into the womb of mary now he's arrived with his life hear me please sit down let me explain something for you if you do not understand this forget about a life of victory this is more than some charismatic talk no this is more than just some pentecostal talk this is truth from scripture so when that life comes 
the spirit of the living God comes to tabernacle within a mortal man a mortal man born of a woman I know that you may come from a Yoruba region Igbo region northern region European region American region help them please but the moment you make this declaration the Bible says we have been called out of every tribe every tongue every nation you are connected back to your original place with all the benefits that follow that place let me tell you when you know this you will spend your life helping the lost to find jesus it's more than just evangelism you are helping them there is no other help that is greater than connecting people to jesus everybody jesus healed still died everybody he raised from the dead still died but there is something you receive and not perish if you receive healing you will perish if you receive breakthrough you can still perish but the life of god now please listen to me listen to me when you receive this supernatural life the next assignment of the holy spirit watch this because you see the activity of the new birth does not necessarily affect your mind the activity of the new birth is a spiritual affair so your mind may be unfruitful many times you just recited something a preacher said to recite and you didn't feel anything didn't fall most times didn't stand you just felt the peace of god and they clapped for you and you followed someone and chances are you can downplay the miracle that just happened to you because it was so easy and so cheap in one minute even if a room has been dark for 24 years the moment you put light light will not start and say let me respect the darkness in that instant the light comes so both the room that has been dark for two hours 10 days 100 years they all react the same way to light but when that light comes watch this just because you are a recipient of that life does not make you walk in the liberty of that life let's establish a few things here number one we have been called into a supernatural life based on the authority of scripture the church of the lord jesus is a supernatural church the supernatural should be nothing strange for us through us and with us salvation the new birth experience itself is supernatural that's what gives us the basis for manifesting the supernatural however just because you are a recipient of the life of god through the new birth experience does not mean you will walk in it experientially there is the dynamics of the supernatural and that's what i want to expose you to because there are many people as true as all i've said is you may spend the rest of your life living and allowing your life to be a misrepresentation of the power the grace the glory of god and tonight let god be true and every man a liar. If what I've said and all I've said is true, why then do we have preachers that are powerless, businessmen that are powerless, career people that are powerless, believers that are powerless, everything natural, the sequence of your life natural. There is nothing extraordinary in your life. When I look at your life and if it is true that you've been grafted into Christ through the activity of new birth, I should find that signature of the supernatural trailing you like a shadow, following you. A week should not pass without you having a supernatural testimony. Okay, apostle, I went in the midst of people and I'm listening. Aha, uh -huh, what happened? And they just pushed me. Aha, uh -huh, and what else? Yeah, I returned back home. No, no. 
that story is not complete apostle i got to a place that was full of unbelievers uh-huh i'm listening what happened they looked at me we just said we just exchanged pleasantries and i left you left nothing happened from you through you to them jesus was not revealed nothing happened the sick were not healed demons were roaming around and you were there and you left you waved them they waved you back how about conferences that are put together and all kinds of attendants are there both humans and demons they won day two day three day four they even came near the altar with the individuals who dropped the offering and went back and nothing changed at the end of it may the grace of our lord jesus christ such an expensive confession the love of god and we call it the sweet fellowship of the holy ghost and at the end of it those demons still go back How about missionaries who go to crusade grounds and they come in the name of Jesus they say and they preach and they tell the people that Jesus is Lord and when they are done people just sit down and laugh at them I don't mean to be sarcastic but how about ministries that share boundaries with other facilities that may not be Christ-like in their operation and yet for years as that church is there there has not been any impact around Listen, if you understand this, you will know that you have been given the power that transforms people. Where did you keep the reality of that life? It's not just by bragging and saying, I'm a man of God, I'm an apostle. No, great is the mystery of godliness. God lives in me. It is true. Brothers and sisters, find a way of believing this. God lives in me. It was not so when I was born because I was not born saved but somewhere around the story of my life I encountered him Jesus who is the son of the living God today he lives in me and I believe there are implications to this my life cannot be natural again everything I'm about my life has to carry that signature not just for the gratification of the flesh but the revelation of Jesus so when someone comes to me and says apostle nothing is working in my life from pillar to post my life is empty what do you think I should do when I see such a person I am happy that you have met me because I am a blessing to you I can't be a cause me and Jesus can not fail together me alone can fail I agree he will never fail but since he has decided that this partnership is a salt covenant inseparable two of us cannot fail together you carry this mentality when you get into an office you enter not as an employee you enter as an ark you have been entering as one who was employed who is being paid x amount of naira or dollars or pounds that is the reason why you go through the limitation that comes with that system but when you know that beyond salary i am a blessing doors that has been trying the company has tried and tried to get those doors open suddenly when god wants to bless that company he gives them the privilege of employing you when you enter that office you don't have to tell them you have come the manager returns back and says how many staff do we have oh 26 now 27 who was the last person employed and they said one one gentleman like that okay I've noticed in the last one week something has happened here something supernatural has happened have you noticed the kind of favor have you noticed that stealing has reduced in this company 
just because the man was there all the three thieves that used to steal they were caught red-handed people who have been stealing for five years nobody catching them with all the charms that they had an ark just came please hear what i'm telling you i'm teaching you truth from scripture you are not just an employee no you are not just a business partner what you are bringing is more than capital what you are bringing is the presence divinity the supernatural they bring you into a ministry as a pastor you are not just one of the 30 pastors no with all due respect every other person can believe what they believe but you know there is an implication i'm sharing with you my mindset i'm sharing with you my beliefs In Ashkalibra Kato Ziata, the mystery of godliness. The mystery of godliness. Your life becomes an effulgence of signs and of wonders. Your life becomes a, a marvel first to you. Not because you are anything special in yourself. Ladies and gentlemen, what I'm teaching you, these are not just these are not cunningly devised fables. These are truths that are provable. God can live in a man. You can have something you were not born with. You can have something that was not given to you in a university. You can have something that was not given to you in your nation. The reality of the life of God. At work in a human spirit. Listen. Please hear me. Listen to me. Our fathers of faith. Men like T.L. Osborne. Men like R.W. Shambach these men and women carried this revelation they came to africa they shifted climate with power and with grace ordinary men mighty god ordinary men powerful god ordinary men all wise god ordinary men el shaddai I can tell you why people continue to dishonor the Lord because our cities and respectfully speaking our churches are losing the supernatural element there's all kinds of cunningly divine fable, device fables manipulations of darkness the sick remain sick the oppressed remain oppressed all kinds of stories hear me now please listen in addition to the reality of eternal life as you walk with God you get to a point where the Holy Spirit begins to be introduced to you not just as one who brought the life of God but as God himself he begins to lead you through a process he does not just reveal power you shall receive power after 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 god does not empower you when he's building you he empowers you when he's sending you so when you come to jesus stop looking for power come to me it is the making that happens empowerment is at the point where you are being sent not when you are made listen to me because something is about to open up in your life believe me when i tell you this many of here you here looking at me are men and women of god most of what we do in church is just some jamboree of indisciplined young men and women most of what we do in church is not it's not the supernatural it's just a manifestation of flesh from ill cultured men and women of god display of the flesh for the purpose of self-glorification that your life becomes a perpetual threat to darkness not because of what you are saying but because of what you are carrying what you are carrying first before what you are saying
you will be amazed to know what is happening to people now from the realm of the spirit all kinds of impartations all kinds of liftings this is not about joshua selman this is every believer's heritage in christ but hear me brothers and sisters there is one thing i know and this is why you came to church today listen to me somewhere in your christian experience when god is ready to begin to build you and announce you to the nations he exposes you to different dimensions and different levels of graces now listen to my story there was a time i have shared with you a few of my visions here just pay attention i'm in this vision and i'm seeing an endless sea of people from the north to the south the east and the west and then these people begin to cry to me and say apostle there is no food and there is no water and then i said who is the cause and they were all pointing to me it was a whole generation i said me why would i be that wicked and they said you are the one and then i made up my mind that i was going to go but i had remembered in that vision that there were some people who were trying to bully me they were trying to pursue me that's what even took me to that room to be hiding it was upstairs i made up my mind that if i perish i perish but i have to save these people as soon as i open the door here stands this giant ancient man with beards now i know he was the holy spirit but he stood there and he said give me your hands he said we will walk together my hands were so tiny in his hands and yet he held me and we began to move we began to move jumping from one level to the other i've shared with you my encounters because you are about to receive something tonight i was worshiping the lord many years ago and i was caught up in the realm of the spirit and then the lord speaks to me and says son from today i give you my presence as a gift I'm not sure I understood then what he was saying and then I see this huge being standing and he said from today he will walk with you I said what is his name and he said he is called the angel of the Lord's presence walk with you this is why you see some of these manifestations brothers and sisters everything god gives a man is meant for the body it's not the i told you the days of superstar christianity is over we are too serious to just be glorifying flesh no the kingdom requires seriousness if you carry this mentality today brothers and sisters you go to a place where there are demon spirits it's impossible for that place to be quiet you don't have to be preaching just remember the ark has come blessed is he who comes in the name of our God blessed is he who comes in the name of our God Holy, holy, blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of our God look at me the next time they ask you what is your contribution in this company tell them I bring the ark what is your contribution in this business there are five business partners we don't know why you are here 
because intellectually we don't think you have any relevance tell them there is something that i bring the ark caris codeba lakatosia i bring to this company the presence of god i bring to this home the presence of god i bring to this ministry the presence of god i bring to this relationship the presence of god hear me please look at me listen carefully you know we live in a world that likes to bully people based on all kinds of privileges and it's easy to look at someone and say you've never flown abroad you come from a village you are so dull you are so daft and the believer stands full of the presence of god and looking weak feeling inferior feeling beggarly i was teaching a school of ministry students oh there is what you have as a believer i agree you may not have had the privilege to go around the world i agree you may not have the privilege of a superior background i agree you may not have the privilege of a superior sociological orientation oh but there is one thing you have 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 the presence of god the life that brings the supernatural the life of the supernatural he put it in you as you move god is moving as you talk god is talking as you stretch your hands listen listen look at me we're going to pray do you know how arrogant it will sound for an ordinary human being to just suddenly believe that these are my hands you are seeing them what is special about these hands what suddenly makes you believe that these hands can heal without this revelation it is pride hands that you've been touching every day a life that you've been touching every day can i tell you this let no one see you as a disadvantage again you are not a minus to any system if you understand what i'm teaching you i have seen many many sick people healed in my life i have seen many people delivered when men give the credit to me i feel so embarrassed because they are not exactly right men who have understood this they have changed their society and changed territories carrying this gift of god to the nations next time you are going for a crusade you are not just carrying a salmon as that plane is flying you they are getting god to that region as soon as your feet steps on that ground expect things to happen men should be the last of the people you impact begin to impact the spiritual sphere you have arrived there by the power of the holy spirit supernatural changes begin to happen and you shift climates dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the face of development Lord grant me the discipline